and then coding doesn't work. You've got to teach the two together. They go together, and I'll show you how I do that. But you must teach the planning and the implementing at the same time. If you choose to only assess one, that's fine. Really okay. But don't divorce them because they really are important. You can't get them to write a plan or write a program if they have to think about what they're going to do. And you can't tell them, well, what are you going to do if they know they're making their end point to it? So they are related. But, um, and again, this is very heated. They wanted to put the two together, and I said, no. There are students that can't quite get the abstract thinking, but give them some outline, they're great. They can program, they can actually do the test and the debugging. And that's okay. It's a really good skill to have. Programming underpins everything. And as I said to the kids, you might not be the best programmer, you might not be the computer scientist, but you will have an understanding when you're dealing with a web page, hopefully, or when you're dealing with databases, whatever, hopefully you'll have some other understanding. Um, and that's really what we're looking for. So there's a case of they're quite happy to do the programming side, but they do need to know some of the thinking. But it's your more abstract thinkers who are spatial orientated students who can actually think through an algorithm, think through a design to be able to implement it. And we didn't want to just close the door on a lot of students. We wanted to encourage them. I think the time, it will come with time, but um, I do emphasize, teach them together. Don't say, oh, we'll do this bit and we'll only do this bit here. Teach together, but you can <coughs> assess a new one if that's what fits into your program. Okay? And then it goes on to say something more about parameters, what constants are, well structured decomposition, ta da, ta da, ta da, going on from there. So uh, that's all that comes from reaching the standards. I use this as my framework to start off with. What have I then got? I've handed out to you a printout copy of what I have to do next year with ideas of 12 students, my 12 CRSP plan. Didn't you get one of them? Okay, this year in level one, we did scratch. Um, and it was great because they don't have to worry about syntax. Syntax is when you've got to do your programming language very specifically. Okay, it is a formal grammar. And they didn't have to worry about this because Scratch has got it done for them. They just drag and drop whatever they want. So we could focus on the structures, sequential selection, alteration, and this idea of planning. How do you break down your problem? How do you problem decompose before you actually start coding? So we did Scratch this year. And I know some of them came in with the idea of, we're going to do games. No. <laughs> Sorry, no, you're not going to run games all the time. Why should you put them to do that in year 19? Play with Scratch. Yes, please, play with Scratch. Let them do some little games in there, that's fine. But when they came to me here, I said, look, we're doing it formally. I am going to teach you the formal aspects of programming. Mm -hmm. Input, output, all of these control structures, how you do it, how you go from there. So that it doesn't matter whether you're doing Scratch, C, Python, Pascal, it doesn't matter. You've got the basics of any programming language. And it was a bit of a shock to some of them. Others had just went, this is what we want. But I would say on the whole, and we had three classes, 75 students, we had some really good results. And we did bring them through. It's part of everything that's happened in Christchurch. And it was really quite clear, those who could write the design and those who given the design could do the um, I made sure that I had two different assessments, which is what we did. So I'm working on the basis next year that they have an understanding of those three fundamental concepts of selection, sequential, and alteration. They have some idea of what is meant by input, what is meant by output. Okay, so they're coming from a knowledge of scratch. So what I'm going to do in next year is we're now going to do Python. Now they're going to hit the syntax. They've actually got to think what the command is. Mm -hmm. It's not there for them. Repeat and fill, or if this, do that, and it's a nice little block, and they've got to remember all of that. They don't fill oh, the scratches, they'll have to remember. Now they will have to remember. They will have to know what the code is. So I'm going to start right from the beginning with them. So this is potentially my plan 
potentially, hopefully, living on purpose. Um, we're going to have, and I've got this, we've got 10 weeks, 10 weeks, etc. Um, we didn't do any infrastructure this year, but we do need to do infrastructure next year. So we think programming with infrastructure because it's a good combination. And then in year 13, um, hopefully we'll have a programming class and we'll have a hybrid class. Next year, because of what's happened in Christchurch, I've actually got one class that's doing programming and hybrid. Huge class. Whereas this year, I had in year 13 programming and blended the year 13 hybrid. But the way things are, We've got the same numbers of students, but we've got smaller classes. So, in expect what I'm saying is that my year 13 program next year is going to be fairly similar to my year 12. My year 13 is going to be doing um, unit standards. They will be doing this because my 13s next year have not done programming this year apart from the term of JavaScript. So, we've done most of those things. So, I'm going to be starting them from the beginning of Python as well. So what I'm giving you today is what I've been developing my year 13 over the last four plus years um, because it come to me with no knowledge. So I've had to go from the beginning all the way through anyway. Um, so that's really where we're going. <coughs> so what I'm going to do then is input output if I'm looking at week two, sequential problem decomposition and revision, and then I have to do it in Python. So we just go back over that and have to do it in Python. Week three is going into selection, and then week four we're going into loops, and then in week five I'm going to what five and six. I will actually then give them what we had this year is A S nine one eight seven six, which is the level one programming. I'm going to give them the same assessment, but then I have to do the Python. So it's that kind of revision, okay? And then you'll see that concurrently. I'm going to get the students to do Cisco, hardware. Um, Blair is, he is accredited by Cisco, so we're going to let the kids do that Cisco fundamentals course all online. I've given them a time frame, and this is how Blair done it with the year That's the homework. They can do it online. Any questions that can come and ask, but it's all there for them, and it's pretty well set up. So for two terms, they're going to be doing that at home to cover what we didn't do this year. We didn't have time to do any infrastructure this year. This is not our program number one, and that's it. But if I want to do level two hardware, they need to have the level one knowledge. So I'm not going to assess level one. They're going to teach themselves, and they're going to go to level two, which is the need to Okay? But the programming, I will need to teach. I need them in front of me. I need to tell them what's going on. Then you'll see that in week six I took about function tic tac toe. I'll come back to that one there. And then we go on to functions, and then in the second year we go on to string handling and arrays and lists. Now, string handling is where you're bringing in the indexed data structures. Um, it's a good way to introduce it, and then you can go on to your arrays from there. And you'll see they're going on to that. So then in two and three, we focus more on the hardware, and we've done all the assessments for programming in two. And then two, three, we're going to go on to more hardware. And towards the end of two, three, I'm going back to the computer science. I actually found that worked pretty well with my level ones this year. Um, it was more by default than design. We just didn't have time to do it any earlier. And I just put it in it's too high basket at the state. Let me just get past the programming. And then at the end of third term, the beginning of this term, which is only two weeks, so we only have four weeks in which to do the computer science paper, which has been um, thinking of what's going on in the background. And it actually worked well because they were that much older, that much more mature, hopefully, um, had a bit more experience in what programming was, and then you could sort of give them more of the background. And we were very, very fortunate because Tim Bell is really, really keen to get this going and he said, look, I'm going to cut, which he did. He came in and he gave them a lesson on HCI and then we got him again and he came in to give them a lesson on algorithm design and images. And it was really good because he could, he just got such a wonderful fund of knowledge and a lovely way of presenting and it made sense, I think, to some of them. And um, he was saying, oh, these kids are great. Know, they really have got some of these ideas, and I thought, yes, they have. They kind of picked them up subliminally while we've been doing the program. So, 
So I thought, okay, I'm going to need to compute science to the end of next year. Same sort of thinking. They will be a little bit older. Hopefully, they will have some more understanding of what to talk about. It gets a bit pressured <laughs> have those reports in But anyway, thank goodness this year in Christchurch, we've got until next Wednesday to see all that. No, this Wednesday. No, this Wednesday. Yes, anyway, I'll keep going to teach profit. So that extra bit of time was just so helpful. I mean, my kids were still printing stuff out last Monday to put it the cold. <laughs> That's how much we just made it. Um, yeah, and we'll just see how we go from there. So that's my plan, okay? So that, that's what I'm thinking I will do next year, level 12. Um, year 12, probably change, tweak it slightly, because I can see my little ones are going to have to tweak slightly anyway. Okay, right. What are the resources that you can... Are there any, do we stop being time with any questions? Okay. What are the resources? Now, the resources that I found work really, really well is this one. Think TV, Arthur Programming by Adam Downey. <coughs> and why I like this one is that he is a teacher, first and foremost, as well as a programmer. And so he looked at it in terms of that. Now, this was originally done, I think, about 2002. This is an updated version, and it's online, and you're welcome to take it. I have printed it all out, but it's 242 pages, so just watch printing print it. Um, perhaps you could be a day. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really good to have a space hard copy as well, just to have what you need to have. Okay, so if I go through this here. Sorry, um, did you get this? Yeah. It's in that folder that oh, I'm just sorry. directing oh, you to. Um, this um, is this thing PP. This folder is in
and um, I don't worry about dictionary with the really strong legal person here. Okay? So essentially, what you need to know is your functions, your strings, and your um, lists. That's really what they need to know for level two. Okay? Right, so where do we go from here? <coughs> Um, can I just again have a show of hands of those who have no idea about programming at all? And then I'll just need to know that I might have to do that. Right, the, the bit of sharp, put your hands up if you've got no idea because then I need to put you with the baby. Okay. Um, if someone who has got some idea, you don't have any idea? Do you have some idea? I've got some idea. Okay, so you've got a buddy there. Heather, would you mind budding up with Carol? Just give her an idea there. Bob, you've got some idea. Buddy up there, we've got some idea. Buddy up with Jack, Okay, just so that you've got some idea. Okay. 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 Just do it this quick 
way so that we have to come in the map here. It might be that you have um, not close to brackets. 
it might be that you haven't got this colon. You need that colon here. And for those of you who've done scratch, this is where you tell them, you have to remember that this is my loop and that is my control structure for a loop. I've got to put that colon in. In this environment, it automatically indents for you, so you can see where your control structures are, not from scratch. Um, but when you do that, <coughs> you can see it, and I see both of these on there at the same time. Can we see both at the same time? Yep, all right. Then it's a case of going through with them and saying, okay, what's actually happened? Can we see this root later? Yeah, it does too. Okay, so print hello world. That's what's going to do you. So your output statement, you're not coming to this concept, your output statement, print. In scratch it was, say, that is done scratch, say something. That's your output. So, but I use these words, it says output, input, all the time. So how do we get the computer to talk to us? It's a print. This here, with the brackets and the quotes, you now tell them that is your syntax. You have to make sure you've got all those right bits of grammar there. This is where the formal language comes in. Okay? Then we had print here are the T numbers from, so there's the output. What's happening here? For I in range 10, print I, da 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 something, and print a blank. So what's actually happened here? It's printed the numbers. This print statement here has got nothing to do with the four. Because if you look, that print statement is in back the margin. Only that under the four is this bit here. Okay? So that's the bit, you go back again for those of you who've done scratch, that's the bit that would be in the scratch box. You know? That sort of box you tell them. And you say, right, that's what you're doing. So, um, print I. So what do you think is happening? What do you think is happening? Well, no, this is coming out. So what does it mean? Okay, range 10 is the syntax to say all the numbers up to 10, but not including 10. And this is one of the anomalies you've got to tell in a Python. As a human being, you say 1, 2, 3. In Python, it goes 0, 1, 2. It always starts at 0. Okay, so it's up to but not including 10. There are 10 numbers, fill up, there are 10 numbers, but it starts at 0. Okay, and that's really important because. You call it the offset and pass in that starts at zero all the time. Okay? That print there told me to come to the next line. Because at this stage here, it's carrying on, there's no print in between. So the other line is doing it next door to each other all the time. And this is just a little syntax to say, leave a blank. Okay? It's just that syntax there. In this one, it says, for I in the range there, print I, and I have got, not this, this is kept at the same line, I haven't kept it on the same line, print I'm done. So therefore that goes on each different line and I've got this. Now there's an awful lot of code here. I've covered a loop, I've covered a sequential statement, I've covered some potential syntax as well. Okay? So for those of you who haven't done programming, the fact that we do one, two, three statements of each other, that's sequential. This for loop here is <coughs> iteration. Okay? It's doing the same thing again and again. So we've got that in there. But they have picked up, hopefully, a whole lot. Now I also get them to do this comment at the end here. Hash, it's a comment statement in source code. In, um, it's just for them to realize that, that in some languages you actually have a specific character like a Pascal, a full stop, what I've got to do with the code. But it's just for them to tidy up their writing because you want to encourage them in good programming style as well. And good programming style says make it readable to another programmer, number one, and to use the assessor, number two, but it's not what they need. So it's um, here, always that's your first comment. I haven't got any other comments in here because it's kind of self-documenting anyway, right? And then finish with the first cut. Right, yes. So you, um, when you're introducing it, you were talking about the colour coding that's coming up and, and relationship. That sort of comes back. Yep, yep, you can talk about that too. Yep, the fact that this is in the Pascal language because in a sense, from here, I actually go to Notepad++. Um, 
your <coughs> your processing features in that pen plus plus are a little bit more easier than here. Um, so we start off in this environment, then I go to no pen plus plus, which I'll take you through as well when we come back to that. Yeah. But that's a good point. I'll tell us that thing. Tell them what keyword you must give them. Yep, yep, bring that in as well. So this is a keyword print statement. This is my construct. You see this construct will be in another color if they back to the thing as well. Okay. All right, so I'm now really going to push the boundaries with you guys. We're going to jump to another one here. So we're going to go open. Thank you. 
to don't declare a curriculum you forget it. But you can bring in a bit here, and that's what I have to do next year. I'm going to talk a little bit about how numbers are stored. Data representation, I'm only going to get to the two in the year, but I'll bring in a little bit here and say, look, it will store integers like this, it will store real numbers like this, you need to tell it what it is. And that's what this does here. When I say int there, I'm saying integer no decimal place. If I say nothing, like here, or I do, I specify I want to just float, it will then allow me to do it with a decimal place. Okay? So you can say that's the first move. Int is saying I want this kind of data. When you enter it, it's going to store it as an integer. When you enter it, it's going to store it as a floating point number. And you say there is a difference. And you might want to go through a little bit about how numbers are actually stored. Real numbers is meant to be exponent, it's going to be one and only, but you can bring a little bit of that in. Okay? Here, yeah, enter a really large number, and you've just got that from me. Okay, so what do we tell them here? Input. What's really important about input? Tell the user what you want. That prompt is so important. It's got to realize that there is this kind of user interface thing. You've got to make it user friendly. Okay? So they must always have a prompt as to what they want. The type is here, so you can start bringing in this idea of types. It's an integer type as opposed to float. Now, scratch it doesn't matter at all. It is a dimension thing. But now you can start bringing in those different concepts. Okay? And you can say if you do nothing, it's a string. It's text. Like in the very first one. If you don't specify that it is a number, which is what these two do, it's, strict. it's a string value. Okay? It's text. It will work from that way. So we've looked at output, we've looked at input. Okay? If we now look at some of the um, expressions that you can have. Alright, what you're going to do now is, I'm not sure where it is in your computer. If you go to start, let's just have a look on the start. Um, Okay, right. And I now get the students to actually type in this one. When you open up Notepad++, plus plus, this is what you're going to get. <coughs> Don't worry about all these tabs at the top of the other programs I've got. Now, um, I'm going to open up a program here that I want you to actually type in and then show you how it's different. So, no, I don't. I want Once you've opened up a particular folder, it's okay, but I'm sort of stopping around in my folders. Um, I'm going to go to the branch panel for now. So, so I'm sure you're just going to jump around in the deck. Okay. Right. Now, the beauty of Notepad, how about the other part? Yes, can you actually write that to the open up and now do it? That's tricky. Yes, okay, alright. Um, so, in this one here, if you now type in Notepad Plus, um, you can select the language. Someone was asking. So, you can select whatever language you want to type in. So, if you want to type in HTML, obviously my code has not got keywords in it for HTML. If I go to, for example, what's another one, Pascal, there are some keywords that would be the same, but I want to look at the language of Python. And you can see there's Ruby and it's now got my keywords in. Okay? So you can choose whichever language you want to do it. And it's pretty cool because then it's just the So, Alright, in this one, let's type this in. <laughs> and now you really have to add the dot to the one. Okay? Can you see that? Type that one in. What? No, it's free. Free. No, it's free. It's free. Yeah, yeah, 
Right, when you've got it, I'll just, for those of you who've gone ahead, you go to file and you go to say that, and it's really important if you're working on a notepad that you do put in the dot why when you save it. Okay, so put it back into your C drive again, and I've got it as branch 3, and it's dot .py. Don't forget that, otherwise it's not a .py, okay? And then what you do is to open it up in the Python <coughs> window. So under your Python shell, that's no, that's one I want to run, I want the other one to clear. Under that window, you then go file, open and you open this particular folder. The kids actually work pretty fast about copying from this window into that window and dragging it and they get it all sorted before you know it. Um, I'll still go the long way. So from Notepad, you saved it. You then open it up under your um, idle environment. Make sure you make that your active window and then F5 to run it.
Boolean expression, Boolean being it's an either true or false. Okay? That in, I've gone through a whole lot of bits and pieces of need to read. As I said, I'm doing in an hour or whatever it takes it to do to do. Okay, so um, Boolean expressions have got to be right. So I would have said if some condition, do something. Alright? Then I would have said now uh, my next step would have said now what if it was less than a thousand? Am I telling it to do anything? No, I wouldn't get any output. It's not easy really. So you've got to get the alternative. So you would have if this else something. Alright? Now I have got a range of values. I've actually taken them through this concept here. That if I've got a limited year, I've got a limited a thousand, and I've got a limited two thousand. 